Hey, Dan, it's time for Behind, Behind the, the Buffer. Welcome to Behind the Buffer, a presentation of the Owner's Pride podcast. I'm your host, Dan Williams. And today on Behind the Buffer, I have Mr. Alex Bolton from Boss Mobile Detailing in Phoenix, Arizona. Alex, how are you doing today? Doing great, Dan. How are you? Man, absolutely fabulous. Thank you. Absolutely fabulous. Um, yeah. Right in the in the dead of winter here, and in, in our um, in our region of the country, so we're uh, we're suffering the brutal weather. Oh uh, yeah, we're getting a little bit of rain here in Arizona, but uh, hopefully it'll wrap up here quickly, like it usually does. Oh, lucky, lucky, lucky. Um, Okay, so hey, Behind the Buffer is where we're going to talk about you and your business journey, and we're just going to focus in and get pretty granular and talk about how you got to where you are and where you are going. So as I like to do with everybody, let's jump right into the Wayback Machine and talk about the first time you ever laid your hands, or the first time that you can remember, ever laying your hands on a car to wash it, to detail it, to do whatever the heck you did to it. This is your story. Yeah, um, man, I think... Back in elementary school, I think it was like fourth or fifth grade, my dad, he'd always give me chores around the house. And one time he offered to let me wash his car, which then was one of the old diesel excursions. And um, so it was massive. Um, But he offered to pay me 20 bucks to do it. And I was like, wow, that's a lot of money. So I'll do it. Um, But really started off with just a bucket, a sponge. Uh, some dish soap and uh, and uh, like a beach towel. And that's how I'd wash his car. And he'd give me the shop vac and I'd vacuum out the car. And that was the first time, I guess, I really washed, detailed a car. Um, and then really from there, it kind of just, once I got my own car in high school, I always liked keeping it clean. Uh, my first car was an F-350 um, and washing that was kind of a pain as well, but I did it because I liked it clean and, um, and then, uh, okay. Okay. So, right. So from early on, you got compensated yeah. to wash a car right when you, right out of the chute. Yeah. 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 This is my, kind of my first, I and mean, I never really went anywhere with it, obviously in fifth grade, but, uh, I guess as far as, uh, you know, that was concerned, it's really my first entrepreneurial endeavor. <laughs> right. and, and now did the rest of the family did you start washing their cars did you start doing the other people on the block or or was it no, just, really just it was just at home i mean it, I, I liked doing it but i never thought of it as a business i didn't really think much of it at all i just i liked it and it was something that you know he would pay me to do and you know yeah i'd wash his car and my mom's car and that was about it if you know I, if i wanted to do it on the weekend and make a little bit of money it was, did you do any yeah. other things like, um, like mow grass or do yards or, or sell newspapers or sell candy bars or, uh, yeah. So another thing in our neighborhood in particular, um, was a, an old, uh, citrus orchard. So a lot of the houses still had the rows of like grapefruit trees and orange trees. Um, and what a buddy of mine from the neighborhood and I would do during the summer is go and paint the trunks of them white. Because if you didn't paint them white, it would they would get sunburned, or the tree would grow all the way down to the ground, and it wouldn't look good. So um, we'd go around and paint the trunks of trees. So I guess that was, and we would just do it right in our neighborhood. And I guess that was another entrepreneurial situation I was in. So I'm 53 years old, and today I just learned why they do that. I, in my head, I thought it was something to do with like ants were going to go up the tree or something, yeah. and that the white paint was, I, which is pretty or- silly. I don't think I'm yeah, afraid no. of white paint. You, you don't know. You don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, and then you get your first truck. What what color was this? And you you went big right out of the chute at Ford F two fifty. Yeah. No. So it was the uh, it was a maroon F three fifty maroon with a silver stripe along the bottom. Um, I just I just always loved trucks, and I wanted a truck for my first car and. We found a great deal on this one. Um, It had a six inch lift, uh, 37 inch tires. I mean, it was an absolute monster. It was the V10 Triton motor. So I was getting maybe four miles to the gallon. Uh, But uh, gallons to the mile. (laughs) Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, 
And, but that only because then, you know, fueling it up was my responsibility financially. And I could not, and I didn't have a job at the time um, because I was just in sports constantly. So um, the, that truck maybe stuck around for about six or seven months before I just realized that I couldn't afford to uh, literally just keep it rolling down the road. So um, then after that, it was like a Dodge Magnum. And uh, again, just, I always like keeping it clean and I, you know, went and invested in some nicer, uh, you know, products for washing it and, you know, better sealants and stuff. And that's when I kind of, I never really thought of it until after college, you know, detailing cars, but for a living at least, but, um, I always appreciated the car being clean. I appreciated the quality products and, and using products that would last longer and give a better shine. So, um, yeah. So, and probably you're right. Most people, when they go off to college, don't think that they're going to be cleaning some people's cars. But I tell you what, with this yeah. industry is incredible in the fact that through the financial downturn in 2008 and the global pandemic, most of the detailers that I know made just did fine, sailed right through all that. So what a, a uh, resilient the, industry. The pandemic was amazing for us. I mean, it, it really... I mean, it, 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 it doubled, if not tripled business um, because people were just home all the time and uh, it didn't seem to slow down the economy, really. Um, so there was still a ton of disposable income and people were trying to figure out ways to do it. And this was one of them. Now, with the sports in high school, what sports did you play and did any of the discipline or or, or lessons learned during that time kind of carry through in your life and, and still influence you now, now that you have your own business? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, real, I, I only played football all throughout high school. Um, I mean, it was probably played for six years prior to high school, all throughout high school, and then a year in college. Um, but uh, absolutely. I mean, because being here in Arizona, summer ball starts every year in August. So it's 110, 115 degrees out and we're out there practicing. Um, so definitely, you know, because of my business being fully mobile, um, have, I guess, always being in the heat and honestly kind of being uncomfortable most of the time playing football in the heat, it made this job much more, I'm just, I guess, much easier to handle, you know, during, you know, the, you know, the heat because, uh, because of all the practicing I did in the summer. Um, so that definitely practicing, uh, always looking to improve, um, has, has definitely helped my business, helped me grow as a person, um, and, uh, and really just always strive to be better. Yeah, I think um, it's playing sports growing up and the teamwork and cooperation and everything that goes into and the discipline. I mean, yeah. man, the discipline. Two a days. Absolutely. You guys had two a days in the Phoenix heat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> yeah, yep. it's 100%, 100 degrees. 100% for 100 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So when you started working, let's let's fast forward just a little bit to your first job. What was your very first job that you had? And and what year was it? And how much were you being compensated? Uh, my first job I got when I came back from college. Uh, I was uh, I was a bouncer at a club in uh, Old Town Scottsdale here. If anybody's aware of it or knows of it, it's a pretty popping place. But uh, that was my first job just because my coaches from my freshman year of high school um, were part owners in some of these clubs. And, uh, and I just reached out to them because I really didn't know anything else to do. That didn't pay great, um, but uh, it wasn't really much work. You just kind of stood by a <laughs> gate. People, they couldn't come in there. Um, but uh, uh, I don't know. I'd maybe make like five or 600 bucks a weekend. Um, but uh, that didn't last, but like seven months. I mean, I just didn't really like 
The scene I also didn't like that I had to go, my work shift started at 11 o'clock at night and then I didn't get home until like four or five o'clock in the morning. Um, yeah, so that wasn't really like my style of work, I guess you could say. Um, but then the job after that, which is where it kind of led into the detailing is as a valet and I parked cars for a company. Um, we did all sorts of cool events. Like we did the release of the BMW i8 and we, you know, were able to see like the second one that came into the country, uh, release event for the Porsche Macan, um, and, uh, and then just constantly being in nice restaurants, parking Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Porsches all the time. So that job definitely helped me to one, understand these cars and how to operate them, how they worked. Um, and to be comfortable getting in and out of them, moving them. And the uh, drivers right. of them. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, and the, the, the customers definitely being able to trust us to drive their car. Um, even though like we never really go that far with a car like that, but just, you know, the fact that they would get out and let some kid hop in it basically and, and, you know, slam it backwards into a parking spot real quick. <laughs> um, that, that, uh, you know, it definitely gave me confidence when getting in and out of, you know, really high end cars. Okay. And what were, what did you go to school for? Uh, I went to school originally for business management. Um, I only did one year, uh, just college wasn't really the place for me. Um, but, uh, I did absorb as much information as I could in a year. Um, and it has definitely helped me, uh, with my business today. Yeah. Samesies. I didn't finish either, but I would not trade the experience that I had and the connections that I made that I still utilize to this day. Yeah, absolutely. So, the great thing. Okay. Yeah. So, um, where was the exact aha moment when you're like, and, and the first time that you got paid to detail somebody's car, because it's really come a long way since then to be a pretty organized, you know, well-oiled machine. So absolutely. Yeah. So, well, I was not really liking my boss and the owner of the company at the valet company that I worked for. Um, and I just was starting to look for a different, uh, situation, different job. Um, uh, my cousin actually said, Hey, why don't you try detailing cars? Like, I know you like cars. I know you like being around them. Um, he's like, I detailed cars kind of here and there throughout college. And even though I didn't do it, full time, I still made pretty good money back then. So why don't you look at, you know, into doing that? So I did, I, you know, did a bunch of research, watched a bunch of videos. Um, I was like, okay, this is something that, you know, sounds fun. It's definitely something I can handle. And as long as, uh, you know, I do it right, I think I could do pretty well with it. Um, so I got a, uh, a loan from my dad and my cousin combined for $3,000. Uh, went and bought a little, uh, what, like a four by six trailer, um, attached it to that Dodge Magnum that I still had uh, with an eight inch drop hitch flipped upside down. So that way it would rise. <laughs> but, uh, but did that, got a, you know, a used pressure washer um, and like a flex 3401 polisher and, uh, and just, you know, kind of your general, you know, car wash, wheel cleaner, tire dressing, glass cleaner, interior stuff, and started doing my dad's cars again, you know, kind of <laughs> 20 years later, wrapped around and, and was detailing his cars again. Um, and then my cousin, and then just started calling neighbors and friends that, you know, obviously I knew, known my entire life and told them what I was doing. And, uh, started fairly quickly just because I grew up in a nicer area, uh, fairly quickly getting access to nicer cars. Um, but what really kind of pushed me over the edge as far as really learning this industry and learning the craft was that, you know, I, when, once I started getting, you know, the Bentleys and you know, Mercedes and Rolls Royces, stuff like that, my clients would at the timing, but this was pretty quickly. It happened within a year um, of starting. Um, they had started asking me questions that I really didn't know the answer to. Uh, and that left me feeling like I'm not 
doing my job well if I can't answer a simple question. Um, so then I went and got training, uh, professional training at rightlook.com. Uh, spent a week out in San Diego, really learning, you know, the, the the whole business side of detailing, as well as you know, just you know how to be efficient with it while while still providing the best possible result. And that that was a real game changer for me. And I came back, um, you know, with a lot of knowledge. And, uh, and and was able to immediately put it to use. And that was probably the best thing that I have done for my business and myself personally, just so that way when I do get on the phone call with a new client, a prospective client, um, I can answer their questions and I can inform them because that's really what this is about. Because most people, when they call, they don't know really the finer things or detailing at all. And they, they want it, they want to know. Absolutely. Everybody has their own definition of detailing of what yep. that even everybody just says, I want my car detailed. They might be talking about a car wash or a full detail or a paint correction. The, the yeah. consumer really. Yep. Okay. When did all this shake out? When, when were you in right look? Um, that was probably 2016, 2017. I went there. So I think I established the company in 2015 and then it, it I ran it for about a year just purely based off of basic knowledge that I had mm -hmm. um, and and just still trying to always invest in better equipment and products um, but at the end of the day really not knowing exactly what I was doing or or understanding um, what I was doing and why it was making it work um, so it was probably 2017, I went over to right look and, and, and really, uh, just immersed myself in it. I mean, they were 10 hour days of, you know, partial class time and partial, you know, working on a car. And, and I, and I loved every second of it because then I was like, this is what I need to know. And it's, and it's, and it's what I have been wanting to know, you know, why, why, what's happening to the paint when I polish it? Why? Is it looking shinier? Why does it not look shiny to begin with? So um, just all sorts of things like that is, is really what, uh, you know, I loved about the class. Yeah. And I, I think you're absolutely correct. You know, being when you're newer in the industry, getting training from somebody somewhere is incredibly it fast tracks the heck out of you more so than just watching some YouTube videos oh, yeah. and and potentially making mistakes on very expensive cars. That's going to make your day not very good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, in the, in the training that you went to, you said it was pretty comprehensive and it covered both the business side as well as the, uh, as the detailing side. What do you feel was the biggest piece and most useful information that you took from, uh, took away from there? Um, you know, I, I think that the business side of the class, I mean, under really understanding how to price things, um, putting detail packages together was really important because before that, my packages were very inclusive. Um, so, and they also probably were underpriced, um, but at the same time, it reflected my knowledge. So yeah. I you know, can't beat myself up about that. Um, but uh what I learned was really how I, how to put together a detailing package to where it covers all the basis, but is not so inclusive to where you remove the opportunity opportunity to upsell the client on a on an additional service. So um, really understanding the business side and and where and how to make money with it was big for me because I was just like, Oh, a detail is a detail and you get everything, or at least I thought you should, um, which isn't wrong, but it's not the best way to do it. If you want to make it a business. Yeah. And look this year for owner's pride. Um, I think we're going to have a new channel of business where we can help brand new detailers coming in with their own specific program because they are, it's a different set of knowledge that you need than when you're already an established detailer coming in, um, which focuses down a lot, a lot, lot tighter. Yeah. 
Um, okay. Do uh, employees? Do we have employees? Are we running this thing sole proprietor? I have finally found two good guys uh, to run my uh, my day to day for me. Um, they've been with me now about five months, I'd say, and uh, they're great. They're doing a good job. They didn't know how to detail a car when they first showed up, but I trained them up on everything that I've learned throughout the years. Um, you know, explain to them the whole process, why we do things the way we do, um, you know, and, and, and told them that, listen, you, you might want to try it another way. Um, I don't blame you, but trust me, I have already done that. Um, so there's a reason that things are the way they are. And, um, I, and yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're doing a great job. So I finally have gotten myself to position where I can kind of step away from the day to day and focus on running the business and growing it um, and, and, and just continuing to uh, get better. That's fantastic. And that's what it's all about. Moving from that technician spot to manager, to being an entrepreneur and running your business. So congratulations on that. That, um, honestly warms my heart to hear because that is what it's all about. I love business. I appreciate it. Okay. So what are, what are we thinking in the future? What are our plans? Are we going to get another mobile rig? Do you think a shop is maybe in your future? What, where do you see, you know, your next five years shaking out? Definitely a shop. Um, I'll always probably hold on to at least one rig. I mean, we'll kind of see how things play out with that, but my main focus is getting into a shop. Um, Ever since I started working with you guys and your products, um, one, my clients have been blown away with the quality of the coatings. Uh, We're super impressed with how well they're working and the ease of application has been night and day from the products we were using in the past. Um, But uh, really my focus is to be in a shop. I do have the ability to use a client of mine shop who um, is a private dealer and he's opened his doors to me whenever I need it, um, and which is convenient when we do. But my goal right now is to really focus on selling more coatings and uh, to to work into a shop. You know, the the mobile aspect will always be there because that's where my clientele has come from. Um, I do offer a wash subscription uh, that my clients have really been enjoying lately for the last. I think I've been running that for about eight months now. Um, and it's great. You know, it just simplifies everything. It's just a monthly flat rate. Um, and it covers two cars on a biweekly basis and my clients are really enjoying it. Um, so I don't think I would completely be able to take that away from them, but, uh, it's not my main goal. It's not my goal. Uh, my goal is to be in a shop and to, you know, eventually have, you know, to be able to offer a kind of a one-stop shop situation, whether it's tin, clear bra, the ceramic coatings, um, general detailing, but I'd like to get it under a roof because um, just like today, it's a little bit cloudy out. We got potential rain tomorrow, which kind of screws up our, our, our schedule. Um, But um, you know, being able to bring that all indoors would be ideal. Yeah. I think the implementation of paint protection film and tint, and for you, I cannot, I think that tint even is a loss leader that would just bring people in the door because who in the heck in Phoenix does not have their car windows tinted? Your interior would just melt. Yeah, no, it would. It would. (laughs) Okay. So everybody's, you know, we've all have ups and downs in business. Everybody's made a mistake. What's one mistake that you've made in your business journey so far? that you learned a lesson from? Uh, I mean, the mistakes that I've made luckily haven't been big ones. Um, they're very, it, the ones that I have where it's either just like not doing enough or, you know, it was before I think I understood the idea of, of or the, you know, understanding how to put a detail package together. Um, I don't know. I'm having a hard time thinking of one in particular, but just clients saying, Hey, you know, this is usually something that, that guys would do uh, when I have worked with other detailers, maybe you should consider that too. Uh, like either not doing enough or, or, or not including something in my package and, and maybe charging too much. 
um, for that at the time. Um, so nothing big, thankfully. Um, I, 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 my dad is a, 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 a business consultant. So he, oh. uh, yeah, it's, it's been nice to have him kind of coaching me on the side. So there, I think it's definitely helped me to avoid a lot of big mistakes. Um, but, uh, but yeah, nothing serious, you know, that thankfully, um, well, maybe just more embarrassing than anything else, not financially, uh, uh, hurtful or whatever. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, well, I, what, what a, um, really unique situation that is that your dad is a business consultant. What, what's probably the biggest takeaway that you've taken from your pops in his consulting to you? And and it also kind of points out the importance whether you sync up with a team like Owners Pride or, or 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 another company, you do need to have these people in your life that throw fresh ideas at you and that kind of just help point you in the right direction. Really, because that's all a business consultant can really do is kind of point you in the right direction and nudge you from behind. You got to do all the stuff yourself. Absolutely, um, I think. The biggest thing that I've taken away from you know my dad's teachings and and, uh, and nudging uh, is always to just follow up with my clients after after the work's been done, um, and and then also just being a man of your word and and doing what it takes to make sure that your customers are satisfied. Um, so just following up uh, and and just really at the end of the day, caring about what you do and caring about the, 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 the final result and your customer satisfaction. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Boss mobile detailing. You, you knew that you were going to move up to the entrepreneurial position pretty quick with that name. What, what was the uh, catalyst that sparked boss mobile detailing the name? Um, I think it actually, it was, from my valet days and anytime somebody in a nice car would pull up and they get out and I'd greet them like, how you doing boss? And it wasn't really, uh, anything that I, I just was doing it and I didn't really think about it. I just was, you know, I was like, Hey, this guy's probably a boss, you know? So I, <laughs> you know, how you doing boss? And, and then when it, when it came time to, to, to make a name and think of a name, I was, you know, thinking like, all right, what's, you know, what's relevant with good and great and quality and, and like the best. And, and, uh, and then I was just like, you know, like I, I always call people boss, you know, especially when they're getting out of a nice car. So, um, that's kind of where it came from. Outstanding. Outstanding. Um, how about any, uh, extra resources? I know you've taken the training at right. Look, you, you've got your dad as your consultant. Do you read business books or listen to anything that is also of a help to you? Um, I am starting to work with a new business coach, um, to really focus and, and focus on getting more coding clients. Um, because I mean, we do, do, we do quite a few on our own, but it's definitely not as much as I'd like. And, um, and just really understanding how to market for that, um, for that market of people, um, is, is where I know that I'm kind of lacking in that knowledge. Um, so I'm starting to work with a new coach to help, um, help me get into the market of people that I'm really looking to be. And even though I'm already there, it's we're kind of missing on the sales aspect as far as the coatings specifically go. Um, so that's my newest thing that I'm doing. Um, and, uh, you know, I've only been at it now for a couple of weeks, but um, it's pushing me in the direction of, completely redoing all my website, all my pricing, um, and, and really completely changing all of my marketing strategies, uh, which is good. Uh, I needed to do that, but I definitely needed, like you were saying before, I need that nudge, um, to, uh, to get that thing, like get that ball, ball rolling. And did you, um, bring in somebody from outside of our industry? Um, no, they're within the industry, I guess you could say. I mean, that's what they specialize in. Um, but, uh, but, uh, it's, you know, I've been seeing him and watching his, you know, his, his social media 
and and just keeping an eye on it and something I'd considered for a while, but uh, plus it also wasn't cheap. But I knew that if I wanted to get to where I want to go, then I'm going to have to make that investment and I'm going to have to put in some time. And uh, right now it's me just getting all the groundwork laid out to start really pushing um, for more coaches. Awesome. Awesome. That is the plan. And that's the way it goes. And for those people who are listening at Owner's Pride, we do offer business coaching to all of our people in our network. Kind of just comes with being in the family. Okay. If people want to get a hold of you, how do they find Boss Mobile Detailing? Uh, Website is www.bossdetailing.com. And you can either email us, give me a phone call. I'd be happy to take care of you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, it is a, a, what a cool story coming from Phoenix. Detailing in the blistering sun. Now you got a couple guys taking care of that for you, which is incredible for your yeah. skin. Um, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to share your story on Behind the Buffer. I appreciate it, Dan. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Behind the Buffer, a presentation of the Owner's Pride podcast brought to you by Owner's Pride Car Care Products. Until next time, stay glossy.